Hey guys, Marcus here with Black Elvis. I am up in Bozeman, Montana. I'm here with John Barklow and we are talking about Gore-Tex as a whole. We wanna understand this a little bit better, why it's breathable, why it's also waterproof at the same time. Now, John is an expert on this subject and so we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper and hopefully I'm gonna learn th some things along the way as well. Yeah, so this is a, a, a pretty broad topic. Let me, let me go back 30 years to start. So I remember in the military when I got my first Gore-Tex jacket, and it was a really big day because you, you knew you were a cool guy, right, when you got your Gore-Tex. And so over the last 30 years, um, I've literally trusted my life to Gore-Tex. And, and that's really not a, a hyperbolic statement. I mean, I've had um, dry suits made of Gore-Tex. Obviously, I've had rain gear and really harsh conditions made of Gore-Tex. And it's always worked. It's always performed. And so now that I work for Sitka, which is owned by Gore, uh, you know, I've got to even dive deeper into this product. And it can be very complex, but it doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing is, to me, Gore-Tex is the most premium, waterproof, breathable on the market. Why is that? Because of all the testing that goes into creating a garment like this dew point jacket, right? Creating these different laminates. And when we create something, you know, we look at these big books and we go ahead and try to select the exact laminate, and I'll get into that in a minute, to kind of suit the end use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of like when you sit there and have, uh, you know, one ham sandwich that, uh, that, say, your mom made, and then one ham sandwich that you made, and you're like, man, why is mom's always better? <laughs> because they have basically the same ingredients, but it's how that sandwich is made. It's how this laminate is put together. It's, it's the face textile, it's the backer textile, it's the different, um, we'll call it lamination processes that go on in between mm -hmm. that, that make this such a quality garment. Then it's the lab testing and, and the way that you have to build these garments. So say uh, pockets don't leak or you know zippers don't leak because even though that's not Gore-Tex, it's part of the product. And so that's the quality that we want to bring when we put a Gore-Tex hang tag on something. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to that. The, the other question we get is, you know, how can it be breathable and how can it be waterproof at the same time? And so, again, there's a lot that goes into it. But when you look at the, the, the Gore-Tex, the actual, you know, kind of the meat in the sandwich, yep. um, that is going to have pores in it or holes that are small enough that when we're moving and we... Uh, create moisture, that those moisture molecules can, can go through those holes, right? Because the holes are big enough to let the moisture out, mm -hmm. but the holes are small enough that if a water droplet or winter water droplet falls on the garment or is laying on the garment, it won't that penetrate. water droplet is too big to go through the hole. So it's basically a one-way valve. And as long as you keep wearing the garment and the garment uh, has a nice DWR, which repels water, uh -huh. then the garment stays dry, so it doesn't let water in, but you can move and push moisture out. So there's a lot that goes into, uh, you know, a Gore-Tex product. There's lots of different types of Gore-Tex. I told you about those books. Mm -hmm. So there's three-layer Gore-Tex, which you would see in like this product, the Dew Point. Uh, there's two-layer Gore-Tex. So uh, that's used in, say, our Blizzard series. So a two-layer Gore-Tex doesn't have this backer on it mm -hmm. because we're going to build it with insulation and then put a, you know, an, a, a backer on that insulation so we can remove this layer, use the insulation to protect the Gore-Tex, and then put the backer on that. So it's, it's basically just like a, a menu that we're trying to build. And then after you do that, then you have to take it out in the field, right? Because none of this matters until you go out in the field and actually test it. Yep. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, that go into Gore-Tex. I, I don't know about you, but, you know, I personally am never super stoked if I ever have to wear my rain gear. <laughs> no, but, but it's I'm the last thing you want to put it, on. It's the last thing you want to put on, but it's also the layer that I'm probably the most stoked when I put it on and it actually works <laughs> oh, yeah. because it's probably the wettest, worst conditions you could have. Yep. And there's really nothing else that, that's going to kind of keep you dry and potentially keep you alive, but, but a good quality set of uh, Gore-Tex rain gear. You get a wide range of what Gore-Tex is into. I mean, here we've got the Dew Point series, and I mean, 
It's ultra light, super thin, super packable, and you wonder how can something so thin be this waterproof? And I mean, it comes down to the textiles you're using, what you're putting that on. If you have to have, like you said earlier, three layers or two layers, depending on what that material is afterwards. And then you've got, I mean, right here, we've got the Stormfront glove. And I mean, it's, it's a soft outer, but this has Gore-Tex in it too. So going back to that, it really does depend on what you're using but that Gore-Tex is gonna be the same through and through from product to product. Yeah, it's just basically the, the, the application, you know. We'll go back to that sandwich analogy, if you will, mm -hmm. and that ham sandwich. Well, if you take the ham out of the sandwich, you can use that ham for a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. It's still ham, but the application is gonna be different. So, uh, you know, this face on this dew point jacket <clears throat> is a 20 denier nylon face, right? Probably doesn't mean a lot to, to a lot of people, but you know, to be able to print on that is, you know, it says a lot about where Sitka is in, in, their, in their development of product, right? Mm -hmm. But to be able to take such a lightweight face, bond it to the Gore-Tex, and then put such a lightweight, this is called a C-knit backer, so mm -hmm. circular knit backer, that is really where the magic happens, right? Because when you start working with really thin uh, fabrics, and being able to bond to that Gore-Tex mm -hmm. uh, laminate, that's really where, you know, I think Gore-Tex starts to separate itself from the competition. Um, you know, the other question that I'll, that I'll often get is, you know, why, why spend $339 on this jacket yep. uh, when I can spend $129 on another uh, rain jacket. Now, not Gore-Tex, of course. Uh -huh. and, and you certainly can. And, and I think that's great that there's lots of options out there. But again, you know, when, when the weather is at its worst and the rain is pounding down, you want to make sure that you've got a quality set of rain gear. So everybody's going to have a different opinion about what that is. But what I found over the years that you don't get, you're not going to get the durability. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the breathability. Uh, you're not going to get the water repellency. So you'll have, uh, you know, tape on the inside where the seams come together. Mm -hmm. the, those things will start to peel off. Um, you're not going to get the articulation. So you're not going to get the really nice cuts so that when you put it on, you're going to feel restricted while hiking. And so all that, you know, we with Sitka take that ingredient, Gore-Tex, we put it into a garment like this, and now we build that articulation in we picked the 20D nylon face that has the durability. We chose the exact right laminate package for that active user that's going out in the mountains, be it big game hunting or shed hunting or hiking in the summer, whatever it is. Uh -huh. That's where everything comes together to make such a high quality uh, Gore-Tex product. How, how quickly can you notice that difference in durability and performance? Well, I would say how often you wear it. So, you know, depending on where you hunt, what part of the country you live in, you know, if you're wearing rain gear one day out of every three years, mm -hmm. you probably quite frankly don't need to invest in a higher quality Gore-Tex product because you're just not gonna use it very often. But if mm -hmm. you go out in what I call dynamic mountain environments, so we're up here in Montana, right? You go down to, to Utah, you wanna go over to Wyoming or Idaho, and you're out there hunting in big game seasons, you're out you know, in the spring, as it's gonna be spring yep. here in another month and we're chasing spring bears, like you're going to rely on that rain gear to, to protect you. You're going to rely on that rain gear to keep you dry, to stave off hypothermia, to keep you in the field, to hopefully keep you behind the glass and make you more successful. So if you're, if you're going to go into environments like that, you really do need to invest in, in a higher quality product and that's where, you know, I would say you need to start looking at, you know, a, a set of Gore-Tex rain gear. Um, the, the other thing that I think it's, is worth noting is, yes, these products are more expensive, but they also carry a really, really great uh, lifetime warranty, mm -hmm. right? So as an example at our Sika retail store, you know, we have a repair facility where people can bring the product or they can send the product to if they buy it from you folks mm -hmm. and we'll repair it sometimes for free, sometimes in a nominal fee, depending on what that is, but we stand behind the product. And you know, you're just not gonna get that guarantee with a lot of other brands. 
uh, especially when you start, you know, spending like the $150 on a rain jacket as opposed to $300 on a rain jacket. So there's a lot of things uh, that you have to factor in and, and you know, may, maybe not every product is right for everybody, but I think if you're a big game hunter out west, if you're looking to come out here, you know, even if you're, you know, back east and, and depending on the type of hunting you're doing, um, you know, I need to spend every uh, minute I can in the field to, yep. to give me the best chance of success. <laughs> and so when it starts raining, I don't want to either run to the tent or, or go back home. I want to yeah. stay in the field. And so when, when you're doing that, you really have to invest, you know, in, in the gear that's going to help you uh, kind of find that success. Gotcha. And this, this might be an obvious answer to the question I'm, I'm going to ask, but being ahead of the product categories at Sitka, I mean, you're, you're involved with the development, the design, and so many different products. How intentional is Sitka with the products that they put Gore-Tex into? Uh, uh, hyper intentional. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. Let's just say there is nothing at Sitka that we do on the product side that isn't very uh, thought through and prescriptive. Okay. Yeah. I, I obviously knew that, but I think it's worth noting that, I mean, each product that is designed by you guys, I mean, you think about the use, the intention, and you put Gore-Tex into the products that absolutely need it and where it's going to help function over overfit every time. But Gore-Tex is, I mean, an awesome material and sometimes I guess a little hard for some people to understand, hey, how can this be breathable? How can it be waterproof all at the same time? I mean, it's blocking out water, how can it also breathe? But it helps to go through it and thank you for your explanations. Um, if you have any other questions, let us know. We'd be happy to answer them. Make sure to visit the links below. We'll have um, content there as well. Thanks, John. Thanks.